I am Ayushi Gandhi and today we are going to learn about waste management and today we learn about electronic waste management. So what is electronic waste? How we create electronic waste? What are the sources of it? What are the effect of electronic waste? We'll study everything in today's lecture. It is a very important chapter because right now the scenario is that lot of amount of electronic gadgets we are using and that is creating lot of amount of electric waste in our environment. How we can control it? We are going to study that in today's lecture. So first of all, introduction of electronic waste. E-waste is defined as electric and electronic equipment whole or in part discarded as a waste by the consumer or bulk as well as rejects from manufacturing refurbishment and repairing process. So whenever electronic gadgets are thrown into the dustbin or manufacturers throw certain parts in the waste then it is known as electronic waste. So how we can classify electronic waste? So there are different sources from where electronic waste is emitted in the environment. So the first classification is large household appliances. For example, refrigerator is an electronic waste because it is made of electronic equipment. Small household appliances, boss, mixture, these are known as electronic waste. Mobile phones, information technology and telecommunication equipments. For example, computer is a part of electronic waste, consumer equipments, lightning equipments, medical equipment system. So anything which contains of electronic equipments in it that is known as electronic waste and when you dispose it in form of waste in dustbin that creates electronic waste. So the industries which are throwing the components in the environment that is also electronic waste. Monitoring and control instrumentation and automatic dispensers. So these all are known as electronic waste because they consist of electronic components. Now how e-waste is generated? So e-waste generated worldwide in 2010 it was low. But 2012 it was 40 metric tons. In 2014 it increased from 40 then 2060 it increased up to 50 metric ton and in 2018 it is increased almost to 50 metric ton and will increase more in the few years. So this much amount of metric tons of electronic waste is emitted year by year by us. So which countries are generating maximum amount of electronic waste? So the highest amount of electronic waste is generated by China. Then on the second number you can see it's United States. Then it is Japan. Then it is India. So India is on the fourth number of generating electronic waste. After that Germany. After that Brazil. After that Russia. After that France. After that Indonesia. And after that Italy. These are the countries which are in top 10 in generating electronic waste. So we are on the fourth number in generating electronic waste. So it is a major concern how we can control electronic waste generation and how we can manage the electronic waste. Now, what is the impact of electronic waste on environment and human health? E-waste has come under attack in recent years due to its negative effect on the environment and human health. E-waste is often considered an overlooked epidemic as the long-term impact of this waste is still unclear. Still many e-waste recycling centers have been created in recent year in an effort to protect the human and the planet. We don't know the long-term impact of e-waste on the environment and us. So that's why it is often overlooked. Let us learn about how e-waste can impact our environment and human health. So, e-waste negatively impacts the soil. First, e-waste can have a damaging effect on the soil of a region as e-waste breakdowns and it releases toxic heavy metals. Heavy metals such as lead, arsenic and cadmium. These metals are very toxic and it increases the toxicity in the soil affecting the soil ultimately. When these toxins leach into the soil, they influence the plants and trees that are growing from this soil. Thus, these toxins can enter the human body through food supply, 
which can lead to birth defect as well as number of other health complications. So here you can see that when we create e-waste and that e-waste is thrown into the soil, so the toxic metals will react with the soil. And as they start reacting with the soil, they enter the nutrients inside the soil. As they are entering the nutrients of the soil, they will enter the food as agriculture is done on soil. So as they are entering our food, they will enter the human body and thereby the concentration of that toxic element will increase in our body and affect us very very badly by affecting our genes. And if our genes are affected by that toxic metal, that means our next generation is also affected by that toxic elements and will create defect in our next generation also. So e-waste is very very dangerous because this toxic element will get mixed in the soil affecting our agriculture and as our agriculture is affected we eat that food and that goes inside our body and as our body is affected it can also pass on to our next generation that is how e-waste is dangerous so now how e-waste is affecting water so e-waste that is improperly disposed by residents or business also leads to toxin entering groundwater. So if the e-waste which is disposed improperly on land, so that ultimately mixes with the groundwater. So the toxic element present in the electronic components get mixed with the rainwater and that toxic element will ultimately be inside the groundwater. So as the groundwater is affected, this groundwater is what underlines many surface streams, ponds and lakes. Many animals rely on the channels of water for nourishment. Thus this toxin can make this animal sick and cause imbalance in planetary ecosystem. So when this toxic element are entering the groundwater, that groundwater is also passed to many surface streams. So when animals accumulate that water inside their body, their system is affected. So, so if the animals are affected, the whole ecosystem is affected. So there is a food chain, we are also dependent on animals. If animals get affected, it ultimately affects us and that is how the whole system gets affected. So if we dispose electronic waste in improper manner on land and the toxic element are very very dangerous. The metals which are used in electronic components are very very dangerous and they can affect human health very very badly. E-waste can also impact humans that rely on this water of course. Toxins like lead, barium, mercury, lithium are also considered carcinogenic. So what do you mean by carcinogenic element that can cause cancer? So the lead, mercury, lithium are mostly utilized in electronic equipment. You can see in battery lithium is utilized. Lead is utilized. So these all elements are very very toxic and even carcinogenic in nature. That means it can also cause cancer. So that's why we should save our planet from electronic waste and dispose it in such a way that it does not create toxicity in the environment or in what? E-waste impacting the air. When e-waste is disposed at the landfill, it usually burned by incarnation on site. The process can release hydrocarbon in the atmosphere which pollutes the air that many animals and humans rely on. So when e-waste is disposed on landfills, it usually is burned by insonation. So when you are burning electronic waste, it creates air pollution. The process can release hydrocarbon in the atmosphere which, which pollutes the air that many animals and humans rely on. So ultimately it is now affecting our lungs also. Furthermore, this hydrocarbon can contribute to greenhouse effect, which many scientists think is a leading contribution to global warming. So when you are burning the electronic waste, it is releasing hydrocarbon in the atmosphere. As hydrocarbon in the atmosphere increases, greenhouse effect increases, that creates global warming and it increases the temperature in our surrounding. In some part of world, desperate people sift through landfills in order to salvage e-waste for money. Yet some of these people burn unwanted parts like wire in order to extract copper which can lead to air pollution as well. So whenever you are trying to extract copper from the wire, you burn the wire and that creates air pollution. 
how we can manage electronic waste so majorly the management of electronic waste is dependent on industries which are creating electronic components firstly they should go green then what they should do that they should have a buyback policy so once the electronic equipment which are buyed by the customer are not working properly they should buy back them they should dismantle them in proper manner and then throw it in the environment or then dispose it even repairing of electronic waste should be done continuously so that the generation of waste reduces so as a responsible citizen we should buy less amount of electronic waste so that generation of electronic waste reduces the disposing method should also be followed by us when you buy any electronic component in the manual there is a method how to dispose it in the dustbin so use that method to dispose that electronic waste and then only dispose it that will help in creating less pollution in the environment so responsibility reuse recycle these all are helping in management of e waste so there is an e waste management policy first policy should be waste minimization so how we can reduce more and more waste second policy is monitoring the electronic component evaluating it again and again so that they live for a longer life and then reporting the problems in the electronic component resource mobilization so if there is one part which is bad in the electronic component you can replace it don't throw the whole electronic component waste collection storage treatment and disposal electronic waste should be collected in different dustbin and then there should be a treatment process to it and then it can be disposed in the environment then institutional mechanism and coordination so the institution which are creating electronic components they should coordinate and help in reducing electronic waste there should be legal framework and enforcement so if there are electronic components which are using toxic metal which are highly carcinogenic so there should be laws for those toxic metals to be utilized in electronic components capacity building and awareness so there should be awareness created that electronic components which we are utilizing are how much harmful to the environment and how we should minimize the use of electronic waste so there should be manuals advertisement showing that that electronic components which we are utilizing are very very harmful to the environment so they should be disposed and managed in properly man and one process one should always keep in mind while using electronic components is recycle and reuse so you should repair it again and again and if possible you should go for recycling or refurbishment also thank you for watching this video of electronic waste management and i hope you learned something about electronic waste management and you should know that india is on the fourth number of electronic waste management so we should be more aware about electronic waste thank you